I want to welcome everybody to the third and final installment of our control room videos here. And today's topic is going to be Venue Magic, which is our lighting control software. So we're going to go over a little bit of the basics of how to use that and give you some examples of some projects you can use it on. First, let's talk about some of the basics of the, uh, the system that we have here. This is a DMX-based lighting system, which is an industry standard for stage lighting. Uh, DMX lighting protocol has 512 possible addresses on it. Each address can have a value between 0 and 255 and they can be defined by the lamp maker however they want to define it. And uh, the software uses templates for various brands of lamps in order to assign the channels. Uh, for example, our robotic lights use about 16 channels in order to send the commands for the various features, one channel being brightness, another might be pan, might, another one might be tilt, and so on. Uh, the dimmer packs only have four channels because there's only four functions on those, those are just basically four dimmer switches for all intents and purposes. Now in the software, those values between 0 and 255 are actually represented as percentages, so in the software the interface will show it as between 0 and 100. So that's a little bit of a background on how the process works, and we'll get into that in a little more detail here as we get into the software. We have four basic fixtures here in our lighting installation. First one is an Elation Power Spot 575, shown here on the end. These units have about 16 data channels going into them. They have the uh, gobos in them. They have 15 gobos, I think it is. Uh, which gobos are basically the slides that have the patterns on them that you can project a, like a kaleidoscope type pattern. They are uh, also have pan and tilt capabilities so that you can program them to aim wherever you want them to and then they can also be used with our software to uh, project uh, various or to move in various patterns that are preset in the software. And so we'll be getting into that here in just a little bit. Our second type of fixture is a Power Wash 250, also made by Elation. This unit is similar to the uh, Power Spot 575, with the exception of the fact that it does not have the Gobo capability, but it does have pan tilt and various colors that can be projected from it. There are two of each of these types of fixtures. Uh, in the case of the 575, there's one on either side of the front light grid. The 250 has one in the middle of the front light grid, and there's one right above the stage that, as of this taping, is not working properly. We're going to have to have serviced to get it working properly. Last on our list of the uh, fixture types are the dimmer packs. These units have four, basically four dimmer switches in them. They can be controlled independently, and they can also be grouped together to uh, serve as a chaser function for uh, some of the music synchronization processes that we use. And you'll get to see that in action here in just a little bit. Okay, let's start out with some basics here. Uh, in the case of Venue Magic, everything is organized into two different types of files. There is a project file and a timeline file. Project files contain the uh, basic configuration of the lighting in the environment you're using it in and it can also be used to set up user-defined buttons on the control panel like we have over here on the right hand side um, and some of that type of stuff. Uh, the interface for it uses a timeline very similar to what editing software does. That's why you have a timeline file. Project files that have your lighting definitions for your fixtures can contain multiple timeline files. Generally you should never have to work with a project file. Uh, there is a project in there called TBHS Cafetorium Standard. It has all the definitions for the fixtures already configured in it. And unless you're doing something very unusual, there's no reason you should have to change from that. You would just add another timeline file. Uh, we're going to start out here looking at a simple file. This one is a file that turns on the lighting fixtures at the uh, this is for the entire stage basically. There are four dimmer packs with four channels on each. Each of these lines represents one of the dimmer packs. Um, basically what you're seeing here is that it's turning them on in sequence. 
and this is done through the time uh, the timeline and using uh, what they call an envelope and in editing the, a lot of editing software uses this uh, the Adobe audition software uses this for volume levels and balance and some of that kind of stuff you can edit them the same way uh, in venue magic what you do is you can come over here well first off I'll show you here we've got uh, under lamp effects there is a library of various types of lamp effects that you can use here um, various patterns here, chases, crossfades, uh, modulations. Most of them are in one of two categories. They are either controlling brightness levels of the lamps or they're controlling the motion of the lamps. The motion ones are in two separate folders here, one for lights that have only one type of movement and others for lights that have two types of movements. And in the case of our fixtures here, the uh, three robotic lights there on the front row can use uh, these two channel ones to create various patterns and you'll see that here in a little bit when we get into that. Um, as far as other types of controls that you've got here, the one you'll probably use the most is a basic level control, which is what these are. And all you do with the level control is you simply drag that item over into the timeline and drop it wherever you want it. Now in this case we're going to undo it because I don't want to add one there. But that's how you would add these. These are already added in. Once it's in the timeline, you right click and go to edit envelope. Now this timeline that we're this track that we're editing right now in the timeline, there are multiple tracks on the timeline. This one is for one of the dimmer packs. And in this case, it's the front left dimmer pack. And you can see we have four check marks there for the levels, which is what we're going to control. If I click on one of these, you'll see a bigger gray square show up on one of the timelines. That's telling you that that timeline is controlled there, and these uh, keyframes or handles, as they're sometimes called, can be moved up or down or whatever in order to uh, uh, control the uh, brightness level in this case for lamp number one. If I click on it here it would turn on the lamp. Um, there is a button down here also called update lamps while editing and if that's pressed in you can see you can look at the real light and watch what it's doing when you change these levels and determine if it's doing what you want it to, basically. So that's kind of the, uh, the basics of how this process works. Everything is shown as a level and you go in and you adjust your sliders one way or the other in order to uh, adjust your lamp levels. In this case, if I go up, it'll increase the brightness go back down, it'll decrease it. And these all work in pretty much the same way. Okay, we're moving on here to a, this is a little bit different track. This one is involving more of the robotic lights. Um, this one is being done as a uh, lighting project for the choir and one of the unique things about Venue Magic is the fact that not only does it do the lighting control on the timeline you can add an audio track if you want to and you can even add a video track and play that back through the projector so what we've done here is the choir is performing the uh, Age of Aquarius so we've downloaded a copy of that from YouTube to put on here just to get the timing right in terms of our fixtures and what they're going to be doing. What you'll notice on the timelines that I've set up is I've set up in the case of the robotic lights like the power spot that's on the left, there's two tracks. One of them here 
is used just for the lamp level control for brightnesses, colors, that type of thing. The other track is used to control the positions. And I've assigned those separately so that I could use the pre-configured tracks that exist over here more easily. To control the light positions, we go in here and once again, this is a regular level control just like the other was. I go to edit envelope. You'll see that I have a pan and tilt channel both right here. And depending on which one I've clicked, you'll see the gray, larger gray box show up. I can use my mouse to move that around to basically you come over here and you set your starting positions and you come over here and you set your end positions by moving these up and down and you can watch the light to see it actually pan and tilt to determine where you want it to be. And that can be stretched so that if you have a certain point in the music where you want that light to be in a certain position you can set those and you can grab that envelope and you can stretch it or shrink it however you want to to hit the mark where you want it to be. Once it finishes executing that envelope, and, it's true, and this is true of all these timelines, the, uh, whatever the last setting was that you sent to the fixture will remain there until you change it again. So it's a good idea to, at the, if uh, you want your lights to dim at the end of it or something like that at the end of whatever the number is you're doing, Whatever behavior you want it to do, you uh, if you want to make it go out at the end, you need to put a time or a, a, line, a level control object in the timeline here to tell it to go out, which is what I'm doing here, uh, which is why you see all the, the lines going back down to zero, basically. So the pan and tilt controls are on that track, and it goes through and follows a certain pattern where uh, the light basically will come around from the left hand side to the center of the stage. It then will move the light uh, back towards the uh, audience a little bit further. It will then move the light more to its dead center in the floor basically projecting straight down. And the last one is one of the built-in patterns. It's a figure eight pattern and the light will then go into a movement pattern basically doing a figure eight circle. And your level controls up here uh, basically do the same kind of a thing where they control the lights over a period of time. If I go into edit envelopes, the uh, different tracks here we have the dimmer right there bringing the uh, brightness up to full brightness. We have a color setting right here which uh, in this case is a uh, actually an amber in this case. The color settings on some of these are not entirely accurate because the fixtures we have are a little bit older and they, they don't match. So what you really need to do here in order to see what it's going to do is you need to uh, go in and click on one of those points so the light will start projecting whatever color it's supposed to project at that point. You can see what it's going to look like. And there are cheat sheets in the manual uh, that are printed out so that you can look at it and see where the colors fall on this number scale and select the correct color. Uh, the gobo wheels, uh, in this case we're right here. Uh, this happens to be uh, a value of about 35 and that one's one that happens to look like a planet which is giving us the effect that we wanted to have for this. So that's kind of the basics of it. Um, we'll give you a little demonstration footage here of what this is capable of.
sympathy and trust abounding. Golden living dreams of vision. Mystic crystal revelations. And the minds to liberation. Okay, we're back now. We're going to take a look at uh, some of our options for uh, do, doing uh, synchronized light shows to music. We're going to start out here by uh, taking a look at a piece that I've already done. Uh, one of the unique things about this product is the fact you can not only control lights with it, but you also can do uh, video playback and audio playback. And our system is set up here on the same machine that we were doing PowerPoints and some of the other video stuff on the projector with. And you can use a Windows Media file as video and import it into the timeline. Uh, in this case, I have some graphics that I created using some of the digital juice products that we bought. And uh, then you can also import your MP3 files. In the case of the MP3s, uh, I don't recommend buying them from a non-legitimate website because you run more risk of uh, getting into computer viruses and that type of thing. And we don't want to do that, obviously. Uh, in this case, I bought the uh, music from iTunes and then used the iTunes program to convert it from the native Apple format to an actual MP3 because the software will not work with uh, the uh, proprietary uh, iTunes music format. So we've converted to an MP3, we've imported it into the timeline. Here I've got some of the same level controls we talked about previously, uh, where it turns the lights up and so on. I've got uh, some preset patterns. We've got a wandering circle here until we get a change in the music, and then I've changed the pattern to a circle. Um, we defined the brightness levels, the gobos, and the color with this little bit right here. This is just a standard level control. At this point in the music, we add an additional uh, fixtures on either end. The power spot 575s come up and go to a certain level here and go to a certain position here. This continues on out into here, and we've got uh, level controls where they fade up, and it goes into a chaser pattern. I've already synchronized one of the two chases. I'm going to synchronize the other one now to show you how that process works. Uh, we go into the chaser and we go into properties and make sure that the enable auto beat sync is clicked. Um, we want that to be check marked. Show beat markers is a good thing also because it lets us make sure we're synchronized with the other fixtures. So that's set. And I'm going to click on my music track and do a control click on the lamp chaser, which is still showing as unsynced and I'm going down here to the menu and go sync chaser BMP which synchronizes it with the music beats and I'm going to the music beat that's there I want the lights to go a little faster than that so I'm going to actually use a multiplier um, and 
tell it to multiply that times 2. That should match it with the setting we already have. 128.5, which is what the other one was. So I'm going to say OK. And that now the chase is now synchronized to the beats of the music in the uh, music track. So fairly simple way of getting your lights synchronized so that they keep time with the music. Um, you can try that out and then you can also multiply it if you find for some reason it's not catching the beats just exactly when you want it to. Uh, which we kind of ran into in this case. Sometimes if there's a lot of percussion or something like that in a song it will throw the synchronization process a little bit off. So you may have to play around with that a little bit and see what your preference is on that. So we've got that synchronized and we'll come up here and save the timeline and it is now ready to go. Okay, here we have the final version of the product uh, as far as the, the finished lighting sequence. Um, this one is, was set to Rihanna's We Found Love. Uh, if you want to see kind of the full results of it, you can download or purchase the MP3 and try it out. Uh, due to copyright, we cannot include the audio here on this but it gives you a good idea of what the final product looked like. This is something that could be used for homecoming or prom if it was held in the cafetorium uh, and you can do this with other, other pieces of music also and build up a whole library of uh, music and effects there that can be used for dances and, and other events. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, for students, if you're interested in uh, getting involved in this further there will be a class in the fall of uh, 2012 that will be specifically focusing on video production, audio production, and lighting. So keep an eye open for that and uh, sign up for it if you would like to become involved in this technology. Until then.